Hi, welcome to the Bridge Podcasts. We hope you enjoy the following message. For more information on all that's happening at the Bridge Church, please visit www.bridge-church.com. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life, that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. I'd like to get Emma Reed to come up here this morning. I want her to share something with us and my my wife is just going to help me with that. So, Emma. Bless bless God, Emma, my friend. (laughs) Let's encourage one another this morning. Amen. Some of us have come through some stuff in our lives, Emma. Just a bit. <laughs> Just a wee bit, but we've been through some stuff. And you know, I was reading this morning when I was, uh, um, I went out walking this morning and Colossians, I had been look, reading Colossians and you know, so much of what we've heard this morning is about the victory that we have in the cross. Amen. And everything that we have because of what Jesus did for us. Aren't you glad you didn't have to do it yourself? Amen. Yeah. And um, in Colossians, you know, it, it, this is the, the, pray, the prayer that Paul prayed. That in verse 11 he says in chapter 1 that we would be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. For all patience and long suffering, we know about that as women. <laughs> Come on, women, and help us here. Yeah, you, we know about that, don't we? we? We're the ones that have to do the submission thing, even when we know we're always right. <laughs> That's a shock. It's a real shock. It says, with joy, with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. I'm glad that. It was my heavenly father that qualified me because I would never have qualified myself. I don't tick the boxes. We don't tick the boxes. To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has delivered us and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom in who in Jesus we have redemption through his blood healing through his blood the forgiveness of sins through Jesus isn't that wonderful Amen. does that encourage you this morning Amen. and you know I know you're going to share I know your your history is you were a nurse yes. you were a, a cancer nurse weren't you, um, for how many years? Well, a good... Well, I'll tell you what, you take it from there and share the great things that God has done. Just to rewind a wee bit, I grew up with the most unnatural fear of cancer. I believe I inherited it from my dad. I grew up in a denomination where we weren't taught to reject fear. Um, I trained as a nurse and I I worked in oncology wards and of course I gained more fear. 11 years ago this month, I was diagnosed with an aggressive form of breast cancer. So my worst fears came upon me. Mm. And you know, that's in the word. Mm -hmm. Alan and I weren't part of this fellowship at that time. So we went through the chemotherapy route and all that happens, a lot of surgery, a lot of stuff. We came, the Lord led us to, it was Cornerstone and Dorai at the time, and we came along and we never left. And one thing we did learn was that you reject fear, don't take fear on board. Amen. Amen. Because fear attracts the enemy to your life. And if there's one thing that Alan and I would want to say, and I know I have his permission to say it, our worst fears in life came upon us in every area. But during those 11 years, we learned to stand in faith, believing in the covenant that Jesus had with us, that healing was our portion. Amen. Twice in those 11 years, the the enemy has challenged the healing that I had once this year. Uh, Once was a few years ago, I did share it, and once was this year. And you know, it takes a while from going to the GP to get into the clinic, to getting the results. It takes weeks. 
But the first day that we had any hint that anything could be wrong, Alan and I stood and we declared that we received our healing. We took communion. Alan prayed, anointed me with oil every day and we took communion. We Amen. stood on it and we believed before we received the, re the report that everything was well. Pastors stood with us and those in the fellowship that knew stood with us. We didn't talk about it. We didn't open ourselves up to any negative reports. We believed the word of the Lord. Yeah. And two weeks ago, the all clear was given. Amen. So praise God for that. But the thing I want to leave with you today is, please, the thing that you need to be most concerned about is not the illness, it's the fear. Mm -hmm. And that's something that Alan and I have learned, and we've learned it real good through the School of Hard Knocks, <laughs> through the fear that we, you know, that we allowed into our lives. So all is well, and I'm so grateful to God and to our pastors who faithfully teach the word, so that you need to be aware before things strike how that you're going to deal with it, Amen. because that was what got us through. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's great news. I'm going to Amen. come down with you, but that's exciting. Amen. He's translated us from fear Amen. into a place of faith. Yeah. You know, in Job it says that, the thing you greatly fear comes upon you. Absolutely. And yet, what is, faith, what is faith? It's a big shield. Oh yeah, amen. It just wraps around you like a blanket. You know, we just read the scriptures and we stood on it. And, you know, there's, there's nothing can come upon you once you've settled that inside. It's got to be settled on the inside. And I'm so grateful for my husband, who's so grateful to his pastor, who taught him all he knows on faith <laughs> and standing against fear. Uh, we're in a great church, guys, and please don't, don't miss the teachings that we get. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Let's, let's give a big thank God for thank our husbands. God. Amen. Woo -woo. Amen. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Paul says to uh, the Corinthians, brethren, I don't want that you should be ignorant. So, Paul wanted everyone to understand and have the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He tells us in Ephesians 1.17 that he prays that we would have the eyes of our understanding enlightened that we might know. You see, the, the, the greatest need in the body of Christ is to know. Are you with me? The biggest, one of the biggest problems we have in this nation is illiteracy. And that might be a shock to some of you. But it is that we have a, a, a huge level of illiteracy uh, from people that are uh, nearly 40 and under that have not completed their schooling and haven't got the knowledge that they need even to fill in a, a simple form. That's why uh, debt and everything has increased and that's why there's so many people in trouble because the, when they see a brown envelope or they see an envelope coming through the door, they don't know how to handle that. They're embarrassed in their life because they're, they have a, a, a problem of illiteracy. And uh, this is the nation that took education to the world. Scottish education and there's still people come from all over the world to be educated in Scotland. Uh, so we shouldn't have a literacy but uh, the, the spirit of this age has come to, to, to lie and deceive people into thinking well that stuff we don't really need it because of there's so much unemployment what do we need to be educated for because we won't get a job anyway and then the other biggest problem we've got is depression and, and, and that uh, we have nearly 45% of the population and some sort of antidepressant so there's a lot happening in the world uh, but we need to know that if we have the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue then that's going to take us out of that place. I've learned more since I came to Christ than I did for the 30 years prior to that. 
I, I got myself in a course of education. I got to, to the place where I was going to educate myself in the Word of God. Not only in the Word of God, that I educated myself other ways. But uh, that was from someone uh, that didn't read books, uh, didn't uh, read newspapers or anything. I don't read newspapers now for another reason, but, uh, but at that time before I started to get educated, um, I just wasn't a reader and, and, and it's amazing how many people don't read today. I'm speaking to you as a father in the faith. I'm speaking to you as a father in the faith. This is wisdom that, uh, and if you open your hearts to wisdom today, uh, you see, you can only go as far as the books you read. You can only go as far as the people you associate with. So show me the books you read and show me the people that you associate with and I'll show you your future. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's just the facts, guys. That the principles that God has laid down are there for us. It's all clear and clear view. And that's why he wants us to have knowledge of him. You see that all things have been given to us through the knowledge of him. All things that pertain to life and godliness have been given to us through the knowledge of him. That is to get to know him and, and get to know him in an intimate way. Are you with me? That's uh, uh, intimately is when we, be, it, it's, it's really a sexual term. It talks about when two people are coupled together, when they're intertwined together, their souls and their spirits. You guys listening, uh, the, look as though you're listening. Uh, then, uh, then they get intertwined, get intertwined with me right now. Just hook up to what I'm saying. Uh, and, th and that, you become one with, 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 in the knowledge of him. And that's what I'm going to talk about this morning. You become one in the knowledge of him. And uh, then you realize, hey, I can do all things. Philippians 4, 30. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, the Bible says in, in Revelation 12, 11, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our confession. You see, uh, one of the most difficult things for, for Emma was she was working with, on, with, with oncology patients all the time. She saw the cancers and, and she saw the problem and uh, you know that problem can come on you. Uh, Dermot's an oncologist. He sees that all the time but he's got faith to say it's not my portion. Uh, God uh, has set me free from all of this in the name of Jesus. Uh, it's not my portion. And you say, well, it can come on anyone. Yeah, it can. The attacks will come. But how are you going to resist the attack if you have no knowledge of how to resist the attack? How are you going to stand against it if you don't have the knowledge that you have all things that pertain to life and godliness? We're going to show you some things, facts from the Bible today that the Holy Spirit shows us through the Word of God uh, where Jesus in Matthew chapter 8 went on a healing rampage. He went on a healing rampage, healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. So that's the God that we serve, you know, but we, only, uh, we can only benefit from that, from the knowledge of that. Uh, are you with me? So you can only benefit from something when you have the knowledge of, uh, of how to uh, get through it. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, people today are, are, are making a lot of money by putting uh, their uh, recipes onto YouTube and onto Facebook and onto the web because people want to know how to cook better and make certain dishes and that's why uh, these uh, sh sh uh, programs, the cooking programs are becoming so uh, popular because people want to do better so they look at 
something that's going to make them do it better. Amen. But they, they, they don't just want the, the recipe in the side of a packet. They want to be shown exactly how much. Uh, uh, my brother-in-law came to visit us the other day and he wanted to know how my wife made a certain thing and she says, well I put a dot of this in and I put some of that in and, and he, you know, he's a chemist. He's a chemist. So his brain is, uh, we measure it exactly to there and, and that's the way he deals with stuff. He says, no, that's no good to me. I need the exact amount. To the gram. So it's not just a, a dot of butter here and at this. No, I need the exact knowledge so that I can have the, the results that I, I'm enjoying here. Are you with me? Uh, so that's what, what God is saying. I, I, I'm going to give you the exact knowledge so that you can enjoy what I have for you. Otherwise, we have a God that's an unjust God. He says, this is where I want you to get to. And, and the Bible says that <clears throat> even the sons of the kingdom in Matthew chapter 7 will come before Jesus in that day and they will say, uh, and, and Jesus would say, be gone from me, I didn't know you. But they would say, Lord, Lord, haven't we done this in your name? Uh, but God will say, no, I didn't know you. You didn't follow the recipe that I gave you. You didn't follow the, 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 the commands that I had in the Bible for you or the instruction that I had for you so that you could get to that place where uh, I could say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. O holy ones. <clears throat> it went quiet there, so I thought, you're really uh, sucking this in. Uh, look at the Bible. Look at me, with me in the Bible. Uh, I'm speaking this morning on the purpose and power of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The purpose and the power of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit for our lives. I believe that uh, God has given us the Holy Spirit for a purpose and there's power in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And... and just before I do that, let's pray. Uh, we'll pray just before. I'm going to work now, so I'm taking my jacket off. Uh, the, the word says this, and Father, we come together today under the voice of your word, Father. We're thankful, Father, that you sent your word and you healed them and deliver, delivered them from all the destructions of life. Lord, I thank you that your word and your spirit agree, Father. And Father, your word says in John 6, 63, your word and your spirit are one. So Father, I thank you for your word entering into people's hearts and minds today, Father, that you would give them a supernatural uh, rate of, of absorption, Father, so they could absorb your word into their life, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, uh, John 14 uh, out of the Amplified Bible says this and I will uh, this is Jesus speaking and I will ask the Father and uh, you know that just blows the Unitarians out of the water right there uh, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another comforter that's the Fa God the Father you're seeing God the Son and God the Holy Ghost in that one sentence you all agree with me? Amen. A Unitarian, someone that doesn't believe in the, the Trinity. Okay, so that's, we believe in the Trinity in this church. I just thought I'd, I'd let you know that before we go any further. How many of you think that's a good thing to believe in the Trinity? Amen. Am I preaching to the right people? Amen. Nod your head for yes, shake it for no, praise the Lord. <laughs> so, he says, they'll give you another comforter. Jesus was a comforter to everyone at that time. But he says, I'm going to give you another comforter. And the Amplified, it says, a counselor, a helper, an intercessor, a counselor, someone that's going to give you counsel, that's going to give you wisdom for life. 
a helper that's going to help you through every situation and circumstance that you come against in life. Uh, that w- uh, Someone that will help you through every sickness and every disease so that you can get to a place that I've called you to. An intercessor, someone that goes before God in your behalf and says, Oh, look, please, Lord, remember your grace. Remember your mercy. Let Just pour your grace and your mercy and your compassion out in those people. They really need you today. That's what an intercessor does. And an advocate is someone that uh, stands in a court of law and pleads your case. He's pleading your case uh, before uh, the enemy. He's pleading your case before the Father. And those things that the enemy would try and hook, uh, put on you, those lies of the enemy that would try and come and bring you into condemnation. Well, you have an advocate that says, no, Uh, That person received Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Therefore, in the courts of, uh, of celestial justice, they are justified, made clean, pure. No longer is there anything that can uh, be attached to them because Jesus uh, took all that for them at the cross of Calvary. Amen. So uh, we have uh, that advocate. We have that strengthener who gives us the strength for every day. The Bible says that when you have the Holy Ghost, you have divine energy and you have a standby. He says, I will never leave you nor never forget forsake you. I'll stand by you all day, every day, 24-7. I'm with you in every situation that you're involved in. We have the Holy Spirit standing by. That's who the comforter is. Is that comforter living in you? That's my comforter. He gives me comfort. He gives me the strength. He gives me the energy. Does he do that in your life? Do you give him time every morning? Do you go to him in the morning and say, good morning Holy Spirit? Do you say, Lord, I'm so thankful that you sent Jesus and because Jesus came, he could, he could introduce us to the Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful that I can get through today because the Spirit indwells me and puts me over today. How many of you rely on the Holy Spirit in your day-to-day living? How many of you really rely on the... We got... This is the dispensation of the Holy Ghost that we are living in. The Holy Ghost is here on earth for your benefit today. Amen. Amen. Church, it's for your benefit. The more you get to know the Holy Ghost, the more... Uh, power you're going to have in your life. The more you realize that the Holy Spirit isn't dwelling you, the further you can go in life. Are you with me? The stronger you can be, so you'll be stronger for longer. Amen. You'll be stronger for longer. Who wants to be stronger for longer? Amen. (laughs) There's something supernatural that brings supernatural strength to your life so that you can be stronger for longer. You don't want to be a weak, pusillanimous pussyfooter uh, tiptoeing through the tulips. No, you want to be stronger for longer. I want to be stronger for longer. Definitely want to be stronger for longer. If you've gone through anything in life, you want to be stronger for longer. You don't want to just see the end of life. And, and you know, just thinking about that, we had some, there was some prayers for, uh, for arthritis this morning. In the name of Jesus, I just bind that foul spirit that would bring arthritis into people's lives in Jesus' name. I declare that people, well, those people that we prayed for and anyone that comes in here will be free of arthritis. I remember uh, in, in 19... Uh, it's 77. I had a car accident. I lost my kneecap. And uh, the doctors told me you'll have arthritis for the rest of your life. You'll never be able to live a normal life because of the trauma that your knee has received. 
I'm 62 now. I know it's a shock to you, but I'm 60 and you think I'm not telling the truth, but it is the truth. It'll soon be my birthday in March the 10th. Uh, <coughs> did I say it was... And, and it gives you time, guys. Only kidding. But the doctor said I'd have arthritis all my life. And I want to tell you, there was times when I couldn't walk. Uh, one time we came here on holiday from South Africa. I got off the plane. I could hardly walk with the pain. It was like a knife in my knee. But I want to tell you, with the, uh, uh, taking God's word and believing God's word, that went. And I've stayed, I've stayed arthritis free in my knee since then. Uh, are you with me? We don't have to receive the attacks of the enemy in our life we can believe God and he will, he will make you stronger for longer St think about that stronger for longer guys uh, some of the, 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 the senior team that played in the football they need to know that stronger for longer I don't know about faster but uh, the, the the skill of the, they've got the skill of the nudge. <laughs> the body check and the elbow and other things that the referee doesn't see. Uh, but we've got a referee in heaven that sees everything. So, <laughs> forgive. Uh, that he may, uh, you see, that Jesus says the comforter would be with us, that he would remain with us forever. Uh, and this is the spirit of truth, verse 17, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth. Today we need the truth more in the church than we ever did before. Let me tell you something, the truth uh, or, or a lie uh, can be a lie without any spoken words. It can be impressions, it can be all uh, different things, you know. Uh, are, 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 uh, we don't believe that stuff anymore. 2,000 years ago when the last apostle died, that stuff all disappeared. We don't do that stuff in this church. And, and that could, could have caused uh, Emma to have died. Because you believe, oh, that's, that's what I believe. I believe what, what I'm told. And uh, without going to the Word, and the, you see, the Word is the truth. Yeah. And the Word against anything else, and everything's got to be measured up with the truth. Whom the, the, the Spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive. We saw these young people that gave their life to Jesus. They received the Spirit of truth are welcome and take into their heart because it doesn't see him or know him and recognize him but you know and recognize him for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. So that's the good news of the gospel that the Holy Spirit will live with you, in you, constantly. He'll not just be around you, he'll be in you. Um, so you can draw on reserves and you can also know that there's divine things happening around you. Are you with me? I, I, I told some people this week uh, a situation that happened to me on Thursday. Uh, uh, I had to get uh, an MOT for my car and uh, the way it all worked out was I, f I discovered that I needed an MOT. It didn't come to my mind that it was due. And then I discovered I needed it. I managed to get uh, an appointment with the garage. Uh, there was two appointments in the day. I took the 10 o'clock one. Uh, my son Gary was to pick me up. He came late to pick me up. The reason was the door uh, at the church office was, uh, had a lock that was bust. He had to break in to get people in. Then we had to go and buy a lock and all sorts of things happened. But when I, eventually when I got home, uh, I was driving home and I get into the house. I was getting into the house, parked in the car and uh, the bucket men had been and I was going to uh, take my buckets in, which I don't normally do because our neighbor normally does it. 
and I walked to the end of a road and there was a guy walking down the road and I, as I was walking to my buckets and uh, I says, hey, good morning, how are you doing? And he says, you're a minister, aren't you? And I'm like, how do you know that? He says, I just feel that you're a minister. So uh, he says, can I speak to you? I says, yeah. And he started to talk to me and it, 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 he said... He was from Edinburgh and he was staying in the hotel there. He was there for two days. If, we'd, if, if I'd have missed the guy by one second in either way in my timing, I would never have seen the guy. You get me? The Holy Spirit will cause things around you as well as in you. Are you with me? Uh, it caused things to happen around you, but you'll be ready uh, when that thing comes. Like Pastor Mark said last night at the tremendous anointed prayer meeting we have, come to those uh, about uh, someone that gave their life to Jesus and then there was persecution came. But he had half an hour to speak to this person and really download what he believed in his spirit uh, to that person, which I believe will have great results. But this man says, I've been walking about this town uh, all morning because I've got such turmoil and uh, God, uh, something but drew me to you. At that time, the man had, uh, had uh, depression and uh, it ended up an hour later I was praying for him in the driveway that he would uh, receive Jesus and that he would be free from that torment in his mind. Amen. I believe that's happened. I may never see the man again in his whole life, uh, but I believe that the anointing of the Holy Spirit went into his life and set him free at that moment in time. You see, divine appointments and divine connections are set up by God uh, so that what's in you can be brought out of you. you. God has put it in you. You'll meet somebody in school. You'll meet someone in your workplace. You'll meet someone wherever you are that is crying out for a touch from God and you're the one that God has sent. Don't miss your opportunity. Amen. See, he's with you constantly. Uh, l listen to what Luke 24, 49 says. The Bible says, and now I will send the Holy Holy Spirit. I, I, and now I will send the Holy Spirit, Jesus speaking, just as my Father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. So Jesus was saying, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's not here yet, but I have to go to the Father. When I get to the Father, I'm sending him to you. And 50 days from now, in the day of Pentecost, be in Jerusalem, be in the upper room. And, and when you're in the upper room, and uh, it tells us this in Acts chapter 2, that the Holy Spirit will come on you as with cloven tongues of fire, and you'll all be filled with the Holy Spirit. So... Uh, they had to be in a certain place at a certain time. And uh, there was 500 invited, only 120 went. 380 uh, didn't have the knowledge. 380 made the decision against being filled with the Holy Ghost. That's why we have churches that don't have the Holy Ghost in the church today because people have this power of choice. The devil's come and said, the Holy, the Holy Spirit is of the devil. This is of and all sorts of different scenarios, but they've given, they don't give honor to the Holy Ghost, so the Holy Ghost isn't being taught in their churches. So you've got uh, 500 that were invited, but only 120 came. And you see, and he says, when he comes, he will fill you with Power from heaven. Where are you going to get your power? Where are you going to get your power? I'll give you the answer so that you can answer me. Uh, you're going to get your power from heaven. Amen. You're, you're not going to get it at the local gym. Uh, you're not going to get it at the, at, at the uh, vibrator plate sessions or the kettle sessions or whatever. You're going to get it from heaven. Amen. Uh, that's where you're going to get it from. The Holy Spirit is going to bring it from heaven. He's going to come and fill you with power from heaven. 
You say, why are you teaching us this, Pastor? This is so uh, basic. It's so necessary. Uh, my spiritual father used to say, and he had t-shirts print, printed, and I've got one, it isn't necessary until it's necessary. Uh, and, uh, so it's necessary that the body of Christ understand what they have, the tools they have to, to, to uh, tap into the power source of life. You see, you, 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 you've got... Um, an, an electric hair dryer, you've got electric kettles, you've got all this electric stuff. But if you don't have uh, something in your house called a fuse box that's attached to a mains that's coming into your house and you don't have power, none of that stuff's any good to you. You need the power flowing through those gadgets so that you can use them. Isn't that right? You need the power in your life so as you can use it. No power, no use. So the Bible says in Acts 1.8, but you shall receive power, and this is from the Amplified Bible, you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends the very bounds of the earth. I remember uh, my mother was talking about this just uh, a couple of weeks ago before she went on holiday. I remember when we just started out and we were in a little wooden hut uh, in part of Cowen and Pri uh, Primary School. And it was a wee hut that had holes in the floor and everything. It just had to watch some of the ladies here know where it was. And uh, when you walked about, you had to be careful you didn't walk through a hole. And... Uh, we had this girl came one night, this lady, uh, she had ME and MS, sorry, MS, the, the incurable disease, MS. And she came in there and uh, we, were, we were just in that place and we were just at the end of this, the time. I said, now let's hold hands. It was only a few of us. Uh, we're going to pray. And as we prayed, uh, all of a sudden, we all had our eyes shut. And, and as we prayed, we just heard this almighty crash as, as she fell on the floor. And uh, we, we thought the woman was having a fit. We, we didn't know what was up. We, none of us really knew her. And uh, we didn't know what was going on. But what happened was the power of God uh, just went round uh, everybody there and surged into this woman's life. And... Uh, uh, the, to cut the story short, uh, she was completely healed at that moment in time. She was lying on the f floor screaming, my feet, my feet, my feet. <coughs> and I was looking at her feet thinking, what is wrong with your feet? Uh, you've got feet. Uh, but I didn't understand that MS cut off the, the nerve endings in your spinal column so that you had no feeling in your feet. And she was shouting, my feet, my feet, my feet. Uh, she got up from that place that day and she went back. She's still totally healed. Uh, she, uh, and that's almost 25 years ago. And uh, she signed up for a, a sponsored walk uh, a couple of weeks later. Uh, and she's just totally healed. Uh, amen. You see, the power, uh, unless you're able to use it, is no good. Are you with me? Yeah, God put, put his power in us so that we could do the same. Uh, the Bible says in, in John 14, the works that I do, you shall do also in greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. So the power was given to us. We were supercharged by his supernatural power so we could do the supernatural works of the Lord. I mean, you know, when we were brought into the ministry as young Christians in 1980, my wife was sitting having tea in Middleburg. We moved to another city, and my wife was sitting having tea, and nothing like this had ever happened in our life before. But we had been filled by, with the Spirit, and we were sitting. She was sitting having tea in our wedding china because she was impressing the neighbour, and. Uh, and in South Africa, that was a big deal. And uh, as, as they're drinking their tea, um, my, my wife said, uh, God's, the Holy Spirit spoke to my wife and said to her, this lady has had 
problems in her back for years. She's been all over the place and been to many consultants and no one can help her. But if you, tell, if, you, if you say to this woman now what I've said to you and ask her if she wants prayer, then I'll heal her. So my wife says, this has never happened to me before, but this is what God's just told me. And the woman says, how do you know? And it's, God told me, can I pray for you? She said, yes. And immediately she was totally healed. Isn't that right? She was totally healed immediately. That just a couple of weeks later... Uh, into the house comes a young girl, uh, Patsy Trollope's niece. Uh, she comes into the house. She had one leg that was a couple of inches shorter than the other because of a tendons that were removed from, from her foot. And uh, I said, well, my wife's had a, a miracle. Now it's my turn. So there was only about eight people there. And I said, do you want to see a miracle, guys? And I, I said to this young girl, put your feet in my hands and before I could say anything her other her, the leg that was short grew out to the same size as the one that was the normal size uh, so uh, there's witnesses here my, David and Gary's here that, and, uh, that saw it happen and uh, you see the power of God is here for a reason so that we can do the works that Jesus did and greater works Amen. So uh, this, this shouldn't just be happening in Africa. Uh, uh, Bishop Dagg has uh, posted photographs on Facebook about him being with the president of Mali. Uh, I think you've got to look at that because when he's with the president, because of our support with Healing Jesus Crusade, we are with the president. Yeah. Are you with me? Because wherever he is, we are. Uh, are you getting that? So we're doing the works of Jesus through that. So so uh, the Bible says that we'll receive that ability and that efficiency and that might to do these things. Uh, but you see in, in, in Ephesians 1.13 the Bible says, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. For those of young people that have received Jesus, that's the word of truth. And when you receive the word of truth, you trust that the one that gave you the word of truth. It's like... Uh, any of us as fathers, uh, uh, even right now as a grandfather, uh, Jessica will be going down the stairs in Mark's house uh, when you go in, the stairs are facing you. And if Jessica's halfway down the stairs and you say jump, she just jumps. She trusts, she, 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 she believes that you'll catch her uh, and you won't drop her. You see, it's, it's, it's a trust because you've never, you've never said to her, jump, and you move back, and she smashes on the ground, and you say, ha ha, fooled you. <laughs> no, you don't do that. You, because you've always told the truth, and you've always did what you said, you trust that person, isn't that? Right, you trust the person that tells you the truth. See, in him who gave you that truth, who sent his spirit that brought you into the world, into uh, a new relationship with Jesus, and you believe the word of truth, then you believe it to the point where you act on it. Action is, is, is vital for all this to work in your life. After you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were also sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee, say guarantee, the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. You see, uh, uh, that, that uh, was like a signet ring that they used to use in Bib B Bible days when, when uh, uh, someone that wanted to buy stuff would send his agent, his agent would go out there and uh, he'd put, take the signet ring and put the signet, uh, pour wax on the thing, put the signet in it and everything that was there was owned, by, uh, was bought by the, 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 
the person that wanted the stuff, the, uh, the, the, the person with the money, the, the lord or the king or uh, whoever owned that stuff. And he says, that's all mine. One day uh, we'll come back and br that stuff will be redeemed back to me. Well, you see, Jesus came and he put his mark on us. He put his signet on us. He has sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise. And one day he'll come back for his church. One day he'll come back for you to take you into heaven. And, the, and he'll see that seal that's upon you. The seal is the, uh, the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of his purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. I, I don't, uh, listen, I just want to tell you this part and, and then I, I'm going to move on. Do you, the, the word says in 1 Corinthians uh, 3, uh, no, let's read uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you? whom you have received as a gift from God. You're not your own. You were bought with a price, purchased with a preciousness and paid for, made his own. So then honor God and bring glory to him in your body. So you see that God sent his spirit to live in you. So right now the Holy Spirit lives within you. That, so remember the scripture at the beginning in, in 2 Peter 1, 3, that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He put his spirit within you so that you would have all the power, all the energy, everything. You, you, you see, uh, the, the Bible says that he gave us his power. That's the, the dunamis type of power. That it means energy, it means power, it means great force, it means great ability, it means great strength. And it's also the power, dunamis type of power, that power that we received is all is also the resistance to, uh, to resist all types uh, and overcome all types of resistance against you. So it gives us the power to resist the enemy and all the, the works of the enemy in our life. Amen? So that's what God has given to us. All things that pertain to life and godliness. He's given us, the, he didn't tell us to do something without giving us the equipment to do it, church. Amen. Well, I'm looking at this church to be a church that um, goes longer and goes stronger. This is our 25th year and we're going longer and we're getting stronger. Amen. We're not, we're not going to be a church that's a millimeter deep and a kilometer wide. We're going to be a church that's a kilometer deep. And that's not saying we're going to be a millimeter wide, all right. Uh, but we're going to uh, do what God's plan is for us. And God's plan is for us to do the works of Jesus. His plan is for us to be, uh, it says in James 1.22, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. When you become a doer of the word, you look and ask the Holy Spirit for opportunities to, to work the word, he will send you those opportunities. When you are in difficult situations in life and you say, Holy Spirit, help me through this, he will be there immediately to help you through that. I could tell you right now many testimonies of, of situations that we've been in and the Holy Spirit has just came and answered us immediately and God has blessed us through those things. The Holy Spirit's there with you to help you in every business deal. Uh, he's there as a destroyer to give you strategy so that you can destroy the enemy's works in your life, that you can, uh, you can give you way to get rid of your mortgage, to get rid of your debts. He'll give you help in all of those areas. And, and the Bible says you have not because you ask not. And once you realize that the Holy Spirit's in you, you start to walk in the fear of the Lord. 
you start to walk a life that's holy, a life that's representative of the one who indwells you. Are you with me? The, you start to rely on his strength. You start to rely on his energy. It's not through, uh, it's not through our might, nor our power. It's by his spirit, spirit, the word of God says. It's not by my might and it's not by my power. It's by his spirit. Are you with me? So his spirit was given to us for a reason. And this year, this church is going to uh, move to a new level because of the understanding of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus who set us free from the law of sin and death. You're not going to be held, you're, you're not going to be held in a place where you don't want to be because the Spirit of God will lead you into liberty in Christ Jesus. Amen. Freedom in every area. Amen. Would you bow your head with me? Father, I'm thankful for your Spirit. Lord, I, I just say here today, Holy Spirit, fall on every person in this place. Holy Spirit, pour out your anointing on every person in this place. Holy Spirit, come in your power. Holy Spirit, come and captivate the souls of people in this place. Holy Spirit, everyone that cries out from the depth of your heart, I need you, Holy Spirit. I need that power. I need that energy. I need that liberty. I need that freedom. I need that health. Thanks for listening. Remember to visit our website, www.bridge-church.com and connect with us via Facebook and Twitter.